Welcome back, fellow speculators, news, and entertainment junkies. This is Presidential Speculatainment with me, Danny Winslow. And on this edition, we are going to be talking about the top election news story. Z. Which means, of course, you guessed it, uh, we're not really going to be discussing a whole lot of quote-unquote issues, or is it quote issues, close quote? In any case, we will be focusing in on a one Donald Trump. So remember when Donald Trump ran for president? Uh, I I do. Like it was yesterday. Um, actually, it was June sixteenth when Donald Trump announced his run for president. And when that happened, he rode an escalator down to where he was uh, given a speech. And then he played uh, Keep on Rockin' in the Free World by Neil Young. And then he gave his speech. And he said, he said a lot of things. He said a lot of things. And out of all the things he said, uh, some of them were rude comments. He made rude comments about the Chinese. He made rude comments comments about the people who decided to leave the oil in Iraq after our military left, and he uh, insulted Mexicans, uh, which has become the, the, the top news story now. Um, and I guess it's the second top uh, racial news story. Because uh, there's all these headlines, of course, about, um, you know, the Confederate battle flag, which, um, you know, I mean, I everybody knows that, you know, the History Channel can be terrifically exciting, or it can just be, like, the duller than watching grass grow. Uh, But hey, I mean, if they want to just pour over old artifacts and documents in real time on 24-hour news television, then hey, that's that's their loss of ratings, right? More people for me. Uh, But they are also discussing this comment made by Trump during that speech, and he has found himself in hot water, blah, 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 blah. You know how it works. So I'm going to let you know right now what what he said and what the general media reaction was, as well as some individuals speaking out. And then Trump just gave uh, a statement, an official statement, almost three weeks later, um, sort of, you know, he, he didn't really walk back his comments or you know, uh, decry them or, you know, but he, he did, uh, give a second statement about the first statement and, uh, the news cycle still rolls on about this and it's, it's, uh, trending you could say. And then, uh, uh, we will look at what the issue in question is. And then we're going to just look right back at the candidate and then, figure out what the hell is going on with this Trump run. You guys will remember in episode one, uh, I, I, I asked Trump to run. I was like, Trump, please run. Not because I support Donald Trump, you know, or am going to vote for him. You know, um, I have not made up my mind in case that's what you're wondering. Um, But because uh, I'm just terrified of this whole Jeb versus Hillary 
or I like to call it Bush versus Clinton number number two uh, scenario that could unfold. And uh, although you know rude comments or uh, you know quasi racist remarks are you know they're they're bad. Don't get me wrong. They're they kind of can make some feelings get hurt. <laughs> Uh, can we just comprehend for a moment the inner uh, indescribable torment, the slow, dull anguish that would result from watching Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton run against each other? All the slurs and bigotry in the world. Uh, well, it would be a tough competition between those two uh, offenses against our great land here in the U.S. of A. So I hope you all had a happy Independence Day. Uh, so what did he say? So during his announcement speech, Donald Trump had the, was, was bashing the U.S. relation with Mexico and uh, describing... And here's what he said. Here's what everyone's talking about. Donald says, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you... They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems. And they're bringing those problems to us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. They're, not, they're sending us not the right people. So that's what he said. Then on June 5th, Donald released another statement. And here's where I think he lost his chance to um, blame this on out of context. Because in his, uh, in his statement about the statement, he actually put his original statement in text form. He basically repeated what I just told you. But can you guess which word I was looking at? I'll give you a hint. It is a very common word. It's a conjunction. And it is one of the most commonly confused, uh, misplaced, and uh, erroneous usages of syntax in the English language. It's the word there. So the chance that I thought Donald could basically reinterpret his statement and try and redeem himself or make himself look good was, which there did he mean? Because, look, he, he, he said that he said they're rapists, as in T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. They are rapists. As opposed to what he could have done, which is wrote it T-H-E-I-E-R. I mean, E-I-R. It's one of those uh, uh, exceptions for the I before E rule. They're rapists. So why didn't he do that? Because that would be way, way less offensive if he said, uh, that Mexico is sending their rapists. Instead, he just owns up to saying they are rapists, as in Mexicans are rapists, or like it, it's a huge generalization, which was his mistake. Don't get me wrong. He should not have said that, or he should not have said it like that, or he should have said that he did not say it like that. But he, he didn't do any of those three. He, for some reason, decided to say that he said uh, they are rapists. And hey, guys, this is coming from um, a professional writer. That is how I make my living. And uh, oftentimes, I will transcribe a statement. And it's very key which use of there is in place. And I don't know. He totally blew this chance. Um, 
And so, you know what, uh, Donald? Maybe you need to uh, touch up on your grammar. I mean, you know, didn't you write the art of the deal? Um, so, m- missed a big chance there to really downplay um, a, a, a sort of insult, but instead owned up to the full meanness of uh, of like what he said. Too bad for Donald. Too bad for Donald. Um, and of course, this is a controversy now. It's a gaffe. The media has something to talk about. And um, of course, they love issues which, you know, are, are, are controversial. And of course, uh, you know, these, these companies these days, uh, they don't want to be represented by anybody who says anything controversial. So there's been companies like Macy's, NBC, NASCAR, and they've, uh, you know, decried Trump's comments and cut off business deals with him, uh, etc. Actually, Trump addressed this in his restatement. He says, Macy's, NBC, Serta, and NASCAR have all taken the weak and very sad position of being politically correct, even though they're wrong in terms of what's good for our country. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not like uh, uh, sentencing the guy, you know, to the seventh circle of hell here. Um, but I, I do agree that um, he, he shouldn't have called all of them rapists. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not that sensitive of a guy, so that, I, I'm not bothered usually on, uh, sort of the emotional wavelength, but I don't like inaccuracies and that is simply inaccurate. It's factually wrong and, um, therefore erroneous. And so, um, Trump you get no love from me for uh, mislabeling people as types of criminals, which they're not. I mean, you shouldn't call an arsonist a rapist because that's just rude. Um, at the same time, I'm also disagreeing here. Well, I'm not disagreeing because that's a, that's a silly word. But um, I'm a little uh, slow to jump on the uh, corporate, you know, protest camp because the one thing I will partially uh, agree with Donald here is that certain companies taken the weak and very sad position of being politically correct. So you know, it's like. Yeah, what what Trump did was 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 uh was not great. He's paying for it, and um, you know, it was very unflattering. But I'll tell you another thing that's unflattering is just being totally politically correct a hundred percent of the time on every single topic. Um, so. It's not two choices here, people. It's not either you're a bigot or you're politically correct Boy Scout. Because the second option is still not great, in my opinion. So, you know, there you have it. Of course, Trump, part of his style is that he's not backing down. uh, And... Other candidates have been asked about this, um, Jeb, and he said uh, Trump doesn't represent the values of the Republican Party. Um, so there you have it. I guess I guess Jeb is the you know the arbiter of uh, what makes something a Republican greatness or, or not. Cruz was asked about it, and he was. 
he just did one of his kind of like weird squints and slow head swivels and was like, I like Donald Trump uh, trying to walk that tightrope, you know, between really saying, saying anything about it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's like, how big of a deal is this? You know, um, I think it's a, it's a small to moderate deal, you know, maybe a little closer to moderate. Um, but he didn't, you know, put on a white cap and, uh, start, you know, singing KKK, uh, campfire songs, but he, he just like, um, incorrectly commented that all of these, uh, people that Mexico is quote unquote sending are rapists. And so you can call that sloppy. You can say that was a Freudian slip. Donald actually thinks all Mexicans that are illegal immigrants are rapists. Or you can maybe, I don't know, maybe it's somewhere in between. I'm trying to care. Um, But, you know, I, I do. But I care on the level of some stooge on the playground that is trying to, um, you know, that basically insults somebody and makes himself look bad. Like he's trying to flex his own ego, but then he actually just does a poor job of, uh, of, you know, swelling himself up at the expense of somebody smaller and then the other kids are like aha <laughs> you know big big steve uh looked really stupid right then so th- that's that's uh the level that i'm on um and what prompted this comment does that matter does that matter i mean it's weird that there's so many articles and special reports about um, the way Trump described something. What about the object of the description? Does that matter? It's very clear to me what the issue is here. And I believe this will be one of the top issues in the election. It's one of the few um distinctions between your typical Republican and Democrat. And of course, we are talking about the border, illegal immigration, uh, amnesty, and basically everything that happens in the southernmost part of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. So... What's going on down there, by the way? So I'm going to give you a little bit of factual context. Um, There is an organization known as the Center for Immigration Studies. And they released um, a report. I believe this was from 2014. Talking about stats from 2013. Because basically... The ICE, which is the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, they uh, were engaging in 2013 in a controversial program to uh, let go, I guess you could say let go or release or um, free or unleash or, you know, uh, take the cuffs off 36,007 individuals who were being held by that agency. Um, they, they were being processed for deportation. So instead of being processed, um, they, they let them out back into 
society. Now, the issue here is that out of these roughly 36,000 individuals, um, there, there are some criminal convictions among them all. Um, in fact, the total amount of criminal convictions is greater than the number of people released, which means the average criminal conviction for any one of those fellows and ladies uh, is above one on average. So, you know, you might be saying, well, wasn't some of it just, you know, petty stuff? Uh, you know, spitting out your gum in public. I mean, we can all agree that we have some uh, ridiculous laws and some mainstream laws that buzz people, which are, uh, which are frivolous. Um, but there were, there were some serious ones. So out of those 36,000 that were released in 2013, um, I do have some conviction numbers here. And these are convictions. So they, they weren't charged with these crimes, but they were convicted, um, which is a big difference in law. Um, but so there were 195 convicted for homicide, you know, tried to off somebody, 303 for kidnapping, and, uh, oh, 200, uh, 2,691 for assault, 16,000 for drunk or drugged driving, um, which is a known killer indirectly so. And the big issue in question, 426 who had been convicted of sexual assault. Now, this is not exactly what Trump was talking about, because he was saying the ones coming from Mexico are rapists, right? Um, this is a little different, but nonetheless, these are, um, you know, immigrants who were originally from Mexico or elsewhere, and uh, they got released, as I said, controversially. So, so very, there you have a few rapists who are illegal immigrants. So um, that's why I'm getting, I've given Trump like one point out of 10 for accuracy. And that's why um, I, I will go ahead and give you the context of his um, misspeak. Because, uh, you know, you decide for yourself, is, is there an actual issue here? Are there 426 actual issues here? What would you have done? Um, you know, would you keep them uh, behind bars? Would you maybe go ahead and process their case? You know, would you eventually deport them? Would you give them, uh, you know, set them up in a one-bedroom apartment, you know, Beverly Hills? Um, what would you do? And, of course, to me, that's always the most important. This other stuff is fun to comment on, but there are actual issues. And so, you know, the issue we're all going to have to ask is about the border and about the existing population um, that, that got through the border. Uh, it, it's very easy. Um, I've seen it with my own two eyes how skinny the Rio Grande becomes at certain points. I mean, you can just skip a stone over it. Um, so, you know, you just have to ask yourself, why isn't the border secure? Could we secure it? Is that politically and actually feasible? And if we do, what do we do with the situation that's already here. Um, are you willing to confront the A word, uh, amnesty? Um, Republicans um, have not been in the past, but this year there's a few of them that want to do it. But 
are they willing to pair that with a border that that works from now on? Or are they willing to pair that with promises and just talking about a border that works from now on? Um, you can look at Reagan's uh, actions on this and we, we've never solved it. And so it is still an issue um, that I'm sure we will be getting into more on this podcast. In closing, I have another uh, urge to an individual to make a run for the presidency. Uh, there's a fella on YouTube and uh, he, I think he's, he's Mexican because he, um, he's claiming that he, he's one of the people that, that Trump's insulting. So we're going to assume he's Mexican or uh, I guess you could say Mexican American, Hispanic, Latino, whatever. Um, and he's like on a work site and this guy comes up to him and he's filming, you know, and he's like, Hey man, uh, what do you think of the Trump comments? And so he's given his free action and he's speaking in Spanish and, uh, he's really hilarious. He's a hilarious guy and like a, a powerful speaker. I mean, he, he's like, what I'm trying to say here, guys, I want this guy to run for president. He's a hard worker. He said he only makes 1100 a week. He's getting 350 taken in taxes. Uh, he's not happy about it. He's not happy about Trump's comments. Um, I don't care so much about that his, his one little position on that issue. I want to know more about this guy. Maybe he would, maybe he would run. Maybe he would run. Uh, so look him up. Um, the YouTube channel is uh, Rafael Rivero. And in the description, it all it says is this video is about a Mexican dude, a uh, capitalized dude. So this is the guy. I, so I want to know more. Um, Mexican dude, would you consider a run for president? Because uh, I like you a lot. Very. Um, he, he was great. He was just great. He was making use of his sledgehammer and pounding the spike in while he was making his point about Trump. Um, very effective speaker. But, you know, we need we need regular folks out there. Um, and uh, I, I really like this guy. He's already kind of going viral. He's got like half a million hits since uh, I think it was posted on June the 30th. So um, Mexican dude, if you're out there and if you somehow get this message, think about it. Think about running for president. Um, I want to at least see you trash the other candidates like you trashed uh, Donald because uh, that was that was some funny stuff. And it wasn't just funny. I mean, it was. This is a passionate, hardworking uh, American, and you know we need some we need some uh, some salt, of the earth, to uh, uh, you know sprinkle on this trail of the great campaign. Um, and at this point, guys, I'll, uh, lastly, I, I just want to say that. I don't, I don't trust uh, Donald Trump. Um, I wanted him to run for comedic reasons. I, I wanted to think that he was doing so for just his own ego. And that was my original presumption, even though I don't make many of those. But I'm now getting a little concerned that there's another play here. Okay, we're going to return to this in, in future episodes, but is somebody else benefiting from the Trump run? So ponder that. He could just be a vote splitter. You know, it, it's like, it, it's just this huge diversion in front of our eyes. It seems like Trump's doing it because he's an egomaniac. But let's just all sit back as we digest the Trump uh, narrative. And let's just think over the upcoming days and weeks, who, who might benefit um, from Trump running but losing, which is probably what's going to happen. And is it just 
uh, you know, another one of Trump's hobbies or, you know, midlife crisis or um, we're speculating pretty far ahead. So I, I'm just going to take it a level back and just ask who would be the beneficiary? Who would it be? And that might help us lead the way. So if you guys have any theories, um, let me know. And I will certainly do all I can to shine some light on this circus. And uh, what I believe is our head clown at the moment. So, tra-la-la.